Hello, hello. So God has written it on my heart to share my story about what's been going on in my life right now. Um, the way that God has blessed me, opened up a lot of doors, and just really showing his faithfulness and his love for us. If you know me from high school, hello, it's nice to meet you because I am not the same person that I was back then and you're not the same person that you were back then. So I just really am excited to meet all of you again. So I... Whoa. I didn't even know my watch could do that. I felt the last time that I really heard God's voice was when he kept telling me and reassuring me about my move here to Hawaii and the husband that he had set aside for me. And now in this current time in my life, I've just been really searching for more direction where God is taking me. So now to tie it back in to what has been happening the last few weeks. So um, a few weeks ago, my family and I decided that we were going to enter into a corporate fast, which is basically us as a family deciding we were going to give up something during the span of, I believe, five days and replacing it with something that would bring us closer to God during that time. So. Um, we did that for about five days. At the end of it, I knew that there was something bigger coming up, but it wasn't going to happen during this fast. That was just my personal discernment, my feeling about where my walk was going. That same weekend, we go to church as usual, and there is a guest speaker, and his name was Jeff, Pastor Jeff Osborne from Destiny Church. But there was something that really stuck and what he was talking about, I have my notes. So he's talking about a burden and he references Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 4, which says, When I heard this, I sat down and wept. In fact, for days I mourned, fasted, and prayed to the God of heaven. And it's so crazy because now that I think about it, the book of Nehemiah was one of the series that... When I was going through my my preparation to move here to Hawaii, um, Pastor Mike Kai from Inspire Church, where we attend now, he was giving this sermon, and during the whole series, I just felt like he was speaking directly at me and my situation. And since then, I always had this like connection to the story of Nehemiah, and I always went back to it during all of the life transitions that I had to go through like since I first heard it and till now and it's so crazy how now we go back to this but that was a scripture that he talked about and essentially what he was saying was you have to feel a burden about something before you're able to really make a change and act on it otherwise if you don't feel like something is a burden to you then you're just going to let it slide basically so the question he posed was, what is the burden God has placed on your heart? And for quite some time, I've known that I have been wanting to basically make connections and be able to use my own experiences for other women, younger women, because I feel like I didn't have a whole lot of that type of support um, growing up. Like, I absolutely trusted and really relied on my older sister, Gabby. Um, but outside of that, I felt like it was really hard for me to relate to other women in my life. So as I was going through like certain seasons, I didn't really know who to speak to or how to open up about it. So a lot of the time I just turned to YouTube and I learned and heard about other people's experiences because I didn't have people in real life to talk about these things about. So that's something that's been on my heart is using social media and this YouTube platform to be able to make those connections with other women and younger girls who might, um, might be going through a similar experience that I went through and being able to talk to them about it and sharing what I learned, things that I regretted, things that I think I did well and 
just be a positive light and encourage them. The last thing that I want to talk about from that sermon was he said, trust where God has placed you. We are each taking on a role in building God's kingdom. And this is where I am trying to acknowledge the burden that God has given me, this burden and gift, and really trying to actually do these things like making this video and being as transparent and vulnerable as I can with things that are going on in my life. So by the end of that sermon, I was crying, but it really stirred up a desire and fire for me to really continue with my walk with Jesus and sharing the gospel and trying to really connect with other people. I'm going to be saying that word a lot today. I already know. And it's really about the fellowship and building relationships with other women. That's when I started to see God really answering my prayers. So like even as simple as thinking to myself, I really want new worship music. And the next thing you know, Tribal, one of the worship groups that I really listen to, puts out a new album and it's amazing. I'm doing devotionals, I start reading the Bible with Ricky, and I'm just feeling so inclined to really create those environments where I am being intentional with spending time in the Word, praying more, and really just being more intentional with my time. By the way, if you have any recommendations on worship music that you like, I would really love to hear some suggestions, like whether it's a particular song, a band, an artist, whatever it is. If you even have a Spotify playlist, I actually have some so we can exchange Spotify playlists and that would be awesome. So yesterday, which I guess at this point it would be two days ago, I am cleaning the dishes and it's the end of the night. I have this weird burden. Again, it's this feeling of a burden where I just... Um, post on my close friends on Instagram and I'm just really talking about how I basically want to make friends. Really, that's what it was. And at that point, I don't really think anything of it, but I know that I want to use social media in that way. There's a reason why I feel like I'm very intentional with what I consume, especially on Instagram. I tend to like mute and or unfollow people that make me feel like self-conscious or make me doubt myself, make me insecure because I just don't want that. So I finish up with that. I jump in the shower and I see that one of my favorite like influencers, Milena Sisiotti, who is faith-based. She has like mom videos, um, Christianity content, like just women's topics, which is essentially what I want to do. I want to just like cover everything that is relevant to my life now. And she posted a video about homemaking and by the end of it, I was just feeling like God was showing me that I am on the right path and that what I'm doing is not in vain. She starts talking about how basically what I went through that I mentioned earlier about not really feeling like she had older women that she could ask about like the whole transition into marriage and you know, becoming a mother and all of these big life changes and seasons that you really need to have a community of women that can guide you through that or at least be able to relate in that way. You know what I mean? So she goes on to explain how she uses social media for that. And that was the first thing that really impacted me where I, that's, I mean, that's literally what I want to do. So she shares a scripture from the book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 3 to 5, and it reads, Similarly, teach the older women to live in a way that honors God. They must not slander others or be heavy drinkers. Instead, they should teach others what is good. These older women must train the younger women to love their husbands and their children, to live wisely and be pure, to work in their homes, to do good, and to be submissive to their husbands. Then they will not bring shame on the word of God. And for someone that isn't Christian or has never really read the Bible, it sounds super extreme. And I used to really think that way as well. I was kind of confused and 
not really sure how to apply these like what seem like very very old and like sexist teachings in today's world that is a separate conversation that i would like to talk about at some point now if you are not a christian then this does not really apply to you but for myself this is something that really resonated with me along with being a proverbs 31 woman this just was another scripture that I really want to carry forward with me in life and just being something to lean on. At a later time, I will share my testimony and give you the inside scoop of how I surrendered my life to Jesus. If you've made it this far, I would really love to hear where are you in your spiritual walk? But I truly want to build a community that is meaningful and I want this to be a two-sided conversation and a true genuine friendship so i'm really grateful that you're here sometimes it just feels like the effort that i make is not really resonating and it's not sticking but i just know that god's faithfulness will always come through in his perfect timing and i just really need to focus on the fruit of the spirit to continue to be graceful be joyful to have mercy and really be patient with this process so I'm just following through with the burden that God has had on my heart and sharing my story. And one last thing that I wanted to share is something special just to recognize my beloved husband. So sometime last week, I had told Ricky in passing, my ideal afternoon is getting off from work, making a nice coffee, sitting down on the couch in the living room and read a book in front of the AC with a blanket on. Don't really think about it after that. Today I get off from work and I take a nap because I'm so tired. So then when I wake up, I decide to make an iced coffee because we were going to go rent errands. So I'm making my coffee and he comes out of nowhere and he's just like, what book are you going to read today? And I was like, I didn't think about that, but let me go read the Multiply Your God-Given Potential book by John Bevere. And this is actually a book that I had bought for Ricky for his birthday. And um, he really, really enjoyed it. I started reading it, but I only got through chapter one. And I just knew that it wasn't the perfect time. That was just like my own discernment about the timing of this book. I wasn't really like resonating with what the book was saying. So I basically just like left it on my bookshelf. Well, I felt like, okay, this is the perfect time because he had been bringing up me reading this book. So I was like, yeah, let me go ahead and read it. So I sit down, I read it, and I'm like having the most perfect afternoon. I'm reading it. It's really great. And then I get to these sticky notes. These sticky notes are ones that I had written down with Ricky when I was in an interview process at my current job and I believe I had just gotten the offer and we were thinking about it, praying about it, even though I knew that God had opened this door himself. Like I knew it was from him from the very start. That is a whole separate story for me to share um, at a different time. But it's so crazy because that was at the end of this chapter. I only got through the first chapter, right? So as I'm reading it the second time, I'm going to read a piece of scripture to you. If the axe is dull and does not sharpen the edge, then he must use more strength, but wisdom brings success. That is Ecclesiastes 10.10. 10. Why is it that my job, my company, had sent us all these axes with that same scripture? It was just such a full circle moment. It is beyond what I could imagine or even try to explain in this moment. Getting this job has really been a huge blessing that I praise God for every day. It is so spirit filled. If you're a content creator, if you're into YouTube, you have watched our videos. So go look them up, Think Media. I will link them down below just so you know. But isn't that so crazy? Like, I have this dream job and here I am just like everything is falling into place and it is so beautiful and now I just really feel called to continue sharing my faith to continue building relationships with women in my life and 
just trusting the process, trusting God and his faithfulness and just knowing that everything is going to happen in his perfect timing. So I'm just feeling really blessed, really grateful to be a vessel for our Lord and Savior here on earth, to be his hands and feet, his mouthpiece, to share the good news. And I'm really grateful for you on the other side to listen to my story and hopefully you were able to relate to this. I don't think you understand how meaningful it is even just leaving a like or I love seeing comments literally just letting me know that someone is watching and has found something of value and something that I said um, even if it's just a hello like hey I'm watching from wherever if you know me from elementary school middle school high school maybe even college maybe even you met me here in Hawaii I don't know um but I would just love to know that, like, who's listening to me? If you know me from high school, hello, it's nice to meet you because I am not the same person that I was back then and you're not the same person that you were back then. So I just really am excited to meet all of you again and see what you're up to. Who are you now? A lot of the people that I um, grew up with are now like living completely different lives. Some of you are mothers, some of you are married, and it's just crazy. It's just, it's a beautiful, beautiful journey of life. So if you have experienced anything that I have gone through, then I would really just love to know that I'm not alone. And I don't know, maybe even be able to chat about it separately, whether it's on Instagram or here. I just really want to be able to have these vulnerable conversations and I love having deep conversations. If you enjoy these long vulnerable conversations, then let me know in some way. Anyway, thanks so much. I appreciate you. God loves you and I hope that you have just a wonderful day, evening, and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.